right, everybody, back with you with our week two audio teaching with Joe Saxton. Joe, welcome back for another week. It's good to be with you. Excited. Ex excited. Excited to be here. Last week, you talked about a few questions that we could process through. And so this week, we are excited to hear from you just to hear what you have to share with us and maybe even a challenge or two. And so with that, Joe, we would love to hear what you have to say. Yeah, as we come to this stage of the book, we're kind of unpacking stories a little bit of the things that have shaped us and impacted us. And I think the best, the best anchor for our thinking actually is a verse that, um, that we see pop up in the earlier chapters of the book and in the earliest chapters of the Bible. And, it, and in some ways, it sounds like a really tender verse. It's Genesis 16, 13, where it says, you are the God who sees me. And on first glance, it's almost like one of those verses that you want as a watercolor print because it's so tender <laughs> and it's so precious. But when you hear the context, yeah. it's absolutely devastating. And this is kind of like the underbelly, like the, 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 the parts of the story of your heroes that you don't really want to hear, but you actually have to look at. Yeah. The story of Abraham and Sarah, at this point, Abraham and Sarai, they are waiting on God's promises, waiting. God has promised them a child and they have waited and then they've waited and then they have waited and they have waited and they get to a point where they take the answer to God's promises into their own hands. I've done it before. <laughs> I mean, been there, done that. God's made a promise. I've inserted the answer and it's, let's just say mixed results are a nice way of putting it. Bad results are the honest way of putting it. Um, and we see this play out here. And not only does it impact them, but it devastates somebody else. It devastates a woman called Hagar. She has no choice in the moment. She is enslaved. And as such, in the culture of the day, she is their property. And she is basically delivered to Abraham to become the solution, the surrogate, uh, the surrogate choice um, to provide a child that God has promised, not through those means. So as as the chapter goes on, and you'll be familiar with this, Hagar gets pregnant, and she has, for the first time in this whole story, a little bit of agency, a little bit of power, and so she's a little happier that, you know, well, something's going right. right. And Sarai's not happy about this and begins to abuse her. Again, like I said, this is a devastating story mm -hmm. to the point where Hagar would rather run into the wilderness and die than stay in their presence. We don't know the details fully of what's happened, but Abraham, it's happening on his watch, and he's not doing anything either. So they're both responsible for what is happening in this moment. And in that place, in that wilderness, in that devastation, God meets Hagar. Mm -hmm. And in her response to God meeting her and basically unpacking the journey of what she needs and saying this is going to play out and it, and it doesn't, it, it gets a little challenging. And then there will ultimately be some, um, some closure on all of this. In response to it, she says these words, you are the God who sees me. And just a little about the Hebrew there. Um, when it's you are the God who sees me, it's not you are the God who observes my situation and <laughs> knows something's happening. The word for sees there is sees with intentionality. It wow. sees and responds, sees and acts on my behalf. She is acknowledging that when she meets God, God is not just observing something's happening, but acts on her behalf. Mm. And so as I reflect on this and as we go through the study together, I have two, uh, there are two angles actually I want us to reflect on. One, how we are handling the promises that are taking a long time. Wow. How we are handling the one, and you might be praying for a child in your family, praying for a, uh, I mean, I don't know the tenderness of your story and the agonies, the secret whispers that have gone into heaven at 3 a.m., um, because your heart has been broken again over something you've been saying, how long will it be? How long? How long? And the tempt, how tempting it is to, for you to just take hold of this and fix it yourself. And I want to invite you to reflect on that before you act. I simply want to, I don't, I'm not even saying that I have the answer to it, but I invite you to reflect before you take the answers into your own hands um, and to consider who else is impacted. But for those of you who look at your life right now and say you are in that wilderness, you are in a place where it feels like the, you have no power, you have no agency, you have no, there's just nothing and you are just at the end of the end of the end of yourself. Mm -hmm. Know that God meets you there. 
And being in the wilderness may be, you, you feel like, you know what, I've read the Bible for months now and nothing's making sense. I've worshipped and I've been in small groups and I've done all the things and, and it just feels really dry. God will still meet you there because he does not need you to perform faith for him. You may feel your circumstances are a wilderness. God will meet you there because he doesn't need you to have it together for him. He doesn't need you to present good Christian woman for him. But that God, take heart from the fact that God meets us in the agony, in the pain, in the loss, in the devastation. And not only that, he sees you, sees with intention, sees to respond. There is a God who sees you and sees the most agonizing of your circumstances today. And continues, like he did with Hagar, to redeem your story. That's so good, Joe. I know in week one you said, uh, we're going to pack a punch in these uh, audio teachings. And let me just tell you, you did that again for week two. Because I think there's somebody, somebody out there that needs to hear you don't need to perform. That you mm. don't need to try as hard as you're trying, you know, you don't need to do it on your yeah. own accord. That you have a God that sees you, that's going to meet you where you are. And what I think I really love about what you are teaching us to do through these audio teachings, Joe, is you're allowing us space to reflect and you're allowing us space to really be with ourselves, but be with God and what he's revealing to us that I think is going to be the transformation that we may be yearning mm -hmm. for as we do this study. So thank you for um, giving us that space. Thank you for giving us a um, very great overview of the Hagar story and something that we're going to read this week um, as you guys go about this Bible study is in chapter four of The Dream of You. And Joe, you write, the God who sees you is worth knowing. He has the power mm -hmm. to redeem your voice and give you a new song. So as you guys go about your week, just remember he sees you, knows what you're going through, and there's intention behind it. So everybody, we are um, hitting the ground running with week two and we will be back for week three. Thank you, Joe.